Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we have the Asus ROG Rapture GTB E98. It is a Wi-Fi 7 router from Asus and I'm really excited about this one for this is the first Wi-Fi 7 router that we will be testing. But before anything else, I would like to say thanks to our friends from Asus Philippines for sending us this unit to test and review. Now, let us unbox the unit. For the specification guys and first impression, it is quite heavy and I really like the design for this one and of course the LAN port that is available on this one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 ports available on this router. There are 2 10 gig LAN port and of course the one port, the specifically colored blue one, okay, because there are actually 2, you can use this blue one, this is a 2.5 gig one port but on the other one it's a 10 gig port okay and aside from that one if you have more than gigabit network or gigabit internet from your isp that is good to have and of course the other things that we have here this is a quad band router okay quad band we have 2.4 5 gigahertz one 5 gigahertz two and 6 gigahertz wi-fi network for this router and aside from that one let's try to check the capability of those for the 2.4, it's approximately up to 1,376 Mbps, while for the 5 GHz, it's 5,764 each, okay? And aside from that one, the 6 GHz network, Wi-Fi network, is capable up to 11,529 Mbps. Okay, guys, these are theoretically, but those are the spec sheet. And we have 8 external antenna, 2.6 quad-core processor, I'll just include the link on the description below for the full specification of this BE98. Guys, I already saw this unit way back before on ASUS office. But not available since then because they still need to request for approval for the 6 GHz Spectrum. But per NTC, they already have issued a circular on July allowing a portion of the 6 GHz network to be used. Hopefully, the whole Spectrum would be approved within the year so we can enjoy this new technology with better experience in our mobile devices. It might be intimidating to add or set up a router like this, but guys, I assure you it is really easy to configure and I will show you the installation process and see the web management console later on for the full features that we have on this router. Okay guys, now for the configuration. Of course, first things first is you need to power on your Wi-Fi router. And of course, you need a source of internet where it is currently connected to, to my main modem router. This red LAN cable is connected to my modem from Converge. And of course, we have connected this one on the one port. But also, there's an additional port on its side, which is, I hope you can see that one, which is also a LAN slash one, which is capable of 10 gigabit network. And if you have more than one gig of internet connection, why not? But for us, we're going to connect it on the blue port, which is a one port as well. Then, aside from that one, we're going to configure this one using our mobile phone. And currently, it's the port Wi-Fi SSID will be Asus underscore 60. Okay, connect to that one. Guys, for the password, it is also located at the bottom of this Wi-Fi router. I won't leave it up anymore, but I have already my password for this one, which is... Where is it? Where is it? 2PWWP9. And let's hit connect. 
to connect to the default Wi-Fi SSID, the Asus underscore 60, and currently we are connected. Now for the configuration, guys, we will be using the Asus mobile application. Okay, the Wi-Fi network has no internet access connect anyway. Yes, because we haven't actually configured this Wi-Fi router yet. Okay, then let's go now to Asus router. Okay, welcome to Asus router. Guys, this application can be downloaded on Google Play Store or Apple App Store. So currently, we need to set up, set up a new router. And we were going to use the Asus Wi-Fi router, the one on the top. Okay, and currently it's trying to scan the router that we have. Okay, we have here the Asus underscore 60 and clicked on that one. Okay. Okay, and it seems that we need to click on get started, okay? Detecting your internet connection status. Okay, if there's a special requirement from your ISP, assure your authorized internet with VLAN tag, something like that one. But for us, Converge doesn't have any special requirement to add an additional Wi-Fi router. So we're going just to click next. And uh, default SSID, let's just uh, maybe name it as well. It's BE98, BE98, then of course the Wi-Fi password for the sake of, okay, Asus BE98, and the password, let's try to change this one for now for easier to memorize. Okay, the next, Wi-Fi is too weak because it's just a simple password for the Wi-Fi SSID, and click OK on that one, and of course, for the admin, uh, you have option to use the default local login password, but we're going to create a new one so we can actually have a better knowledge of our password that is really easy to remember for us. So the password maybe is, okay, it should be 10 characters, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay, that's too long, maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, then maybe asterisk, then next one would be same one, QWERTY, 1, 2, 3, 4, asterisk, then OK, make sure, then hit on apply. Let's wait for a couple of minutes for this one to complete. OK, and it seems that we got disconnected because the Wi-Fi SSID has changed and of course the password as well. So go to Wi-Fi settings, let's look for the one that we have created, it should be ASUS BE98, connect on that one, and the password that we have set is 1234567890, then hit connect. Okay, and it seems that we are connected. Let's try to check or access the internet if we already have internet connection. Okay. As you can see, it loaded, and of course, let's try to search for ASUS BE98. Okay, and as you can see, we already have internet connection coming from this Wi-Fi router. Okay, but of course, let's try to check again the application. Okay, going back to application. Okay, network optimization. Okay, and good connection. We have here the information that we have set earlier. And let's hit finish. Okay, and there you go, guys. You already have configured the Wi-Fi router. That's really how easy to configure this Asus router, even though it looks really intimidating at first. Look at this one. It's really so intimidating but it is really easy to configure okay for the notification settings we'll just cancel this one and of course you also have enable remote connection if you want to remote access this one to manage it but let's skip that one for now and we have here devices we have two devices that are currently connected on this one which is the devices is actually the huawei p30 pro and of course the be 98 and for the other informations we have here in this one and of course guys I'll try to use the web management console from my computer to show you the full functionality or capability of this Wi-Fi router instead of using the mobile phone. But don't get me wrong, the mobile phone is also capable of doing a lot of things. And I'll just like, really like to show you the web management console using a web browser. Okay guys, for the web management console, you need to log into the IP address or the default IP address of the router. For us, it is 192.168.50.1 and the enter. Okay guys, now let us try to check on the things that we can actually do on the web management console. I won't be discussing 
each and every one in details because it will be a long video but for us let's try to access it right now and the default ip address for our web management console is 192.168.50.1 and let's enter the credentials that we have set earlier okay enter and okay right now we are on the main web management console in the dashboard you can see here the information the wireless state we have the 2.4 5 gigahertz 1, 5 gigahertz 2, and 6 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. And currently, we have two clients connected. And aside from that one, the network traffic, it shows you the current traffic that we have right now. And for the ping deviation, there's something right around those. We also have here Game Radar. We have discussed Game Radar before. What does it actually do? I'll try to check it on the other menu later on. And we have here the RGB aura, of course. A lot of you want to change the RGB color on this one. Maybe let's try to green yes and maybe let's be really, wow that's really great features for that one and of course we have here um pink status low medium high currently medium okay and of course we have led on of bfs channel or rgb and game boost okay next one would be the ai mesh guys for the ai mesh this router is of course capable of ai mesh it is a tri-band wi-fi router we have uh, other configuration that you want to the other 5 gigahertz wi-fi network can be a dedicated backhole just to have a great mesh network wirelessly okay and aside from that one we have here optimization of course the client list that are currently connected and we also have here the AA protection for the AA protection guys again by default asus wi-fi router AA protection is disabled because it consumes resources so if you want to turn it on you can turn it on Okay, agree. Okay, it just takes a um, uh, couple of seconds to complete for the configuration if you want to turn on those features. Okay, okay, and it is turned on. We have here router security assessment, scan your router. Okay, there's two danger. I believe this is, would be the password and malicious site blocking to be IPS. And of course, infected device prevention block and blocking as well. Okay, next one would be parental cross. Guys, for the parental controls, we have created a dedicated video for this one. You can check that one out on what it actually do. Okay, we have turned it on as well. And for just a brief background regarding this one, you have here the web and app filters. You can filter it for specific devices like, for example, adult content, instant messaging. You just drop down here and enter the MAC address and it will take effect on those devices. And of course, we have your time scheduling as well. For the time scheduling, enable lock all devices, okay? That's one. And of course, enable time scheduling. If you want to have a device that will be able to connect to the internet on this time, you can enable it on this one. I also have a separate video for this time scheduling, okay? Next one will be the game acceleration. Guys, for the game acceleration for ROG routers, it is given. Maybe I'll try to create a dedicated video for that game acceleration because it is casual or usual on ROG routers. We have here gaming port prioritization and game packet prioritization. Of course, level three is game server acceleration. Okay, these are the options. We have your game devices, ROG first. Okay, and aside from that one, WTF as well. It is also in here. And next one is the open net. Okay, for the open net, let's try to OpenNet offers a hassle-free way to create port forwarding rules for online games and optimizes routing paths. Okay, that's great. If you want to turn it on and you also have your game profile for on, uh, your popular online game, select your game in the list below to complete basic settings as optimized gaming experience just around the corner. Okay, if it is not available, maybe you can add the game that you want for the game profile. Okay, maybe let's like to click on that one and of course we have your uh, server service name name of the game and of course the protocol external port and internal port and the ip address source ip okay these are just basic information that you need for your gaming profile on specific games okay and aside from that one what else we have here game reader okay guys for the game reader this actually shows you on what is the latency for each game on each location like for example uh usw okay the latency is 3 ms for Jablo 3 and of course an EU and KR, it's also single digit latency. 
And of course, we also have here VPN as well that is applicable to all ASUS routers. Uh, RT series, ROG series, and business series. And of course, I haven't actually created a dedicated video for this one, but guys, just let me know if you want to see the configuration for the VPN server on these ASUS routers. We also have your VPN Fusion and Instant Guard. Okay, and that are the options for the VPN. Maybe let's try to click on VPN Fusion on what are the things that we can see here. Okay, you can add a profile, internet connection. Okay, then aside from that one, we have here Instant Guard. And aside from that one, Instant Guard also creates a VPN tunnel. With just one click with by ASUS router, you can monitor who's connected to your VPN server with Instant Guard. Wow, that is actually great. Okay, sorry for that one. I will really create a video dedicated for this individual pictures so we will cover it on those videos as well okay and we have here the traffic analyzer guys for the traffic analyzer this gives you the basic information on devices on how much traffic they are consuming and of course the application that is well utilized you can click on that one it will show you on that one uh, actually i just restarted or reset to pack reset is this one so we don't have any information regarding this one for now and of course, aside from that one, we have here the bandwidth monitor. Okay, uh, this is the live traffic that is going on your network, currently 00. zero. And we have here the traffic monitor. For the traffic monitor, yes, same. No activity right now. Okay, and we have here web history. Guys, it is disabled by default, but I would really love to turn it on if I want to monitor what are the traffics on what are the application or websites these users are accessing to okay and i have turned it on and of course it is still applying settings for a couple of seconds as well okay currently it's turned on you will be able to see the access time mac address or the client name and of course the domain name okay next one would be the advanced settings okay. under network map we have here uh, the basic information like the dashboard we have here wireless you can also uh, change the configuration in here for the wireless the SSID, the password, the encryption, and of course, we have here the status. And for the status, guys, this is actually showing you the information regarding your utilization of the hardware. And aside from that one, we have your Ethernet ports, guys. Uh, for the Ethernet ports, it is mentioned that it's 2.5G1 slash LAN. So, meaning that the one that we are connected currently is just 2.5G. And we also have here, okay... We have, oh, okay, that is 2.5G. And we have her here another 10G1 slash LAN. And of course, we have additional 10G LAN 6. Okay, that's good. Okay, and aside from that one, other information in here as well. And of course, clients that are currently connected. We also have your wireless. Under the wire, under wireless general, as you can see here, we have... Enable Smart Connect. We have disabled this one to be able to show you the different Wi-Fi signal that our router is broadcasting. We have here 2.4, 5 gigahertz, 1, 5 gigahertz, 2, and of course, 6 gigahertz. And you can also change the configuration regarding this one, the channel bandwidth, SSID, and of course, uh, password, authentication method, and everything else. We also have here WPS. The WPS is a button in front. So if you want to connect a device that has WPS capability, you don't need to enter the password anymore. Just click on the WPS and so on. Okay, and aside from that one, we also have WDS and wireless MAC filter. Okay, for the wireless MAC filter, I really like this one because this is the one that will really make your network secure. So if you enable this one, there are two options, okay? It's either accept or deny. If you're going to accept, you'll enter the MAC address on this MAC filter list up to 64 so meaning these mac addresses these devices that has this mac address are the one will be able to connect to your wireless network and aside from that one if you click on deny if you know a mac address that keeps on connecting to your network you can block them so every time your router is able to see that mac address it won't allow to connect to your network okay and you also have your radio settings if you have authentication server and what else we have here professional under professional yes it's still configuration regarding the wireless and roaming block list we have your mlo and of course guest network pro guys for the guest network pro i'm not really sure if this is really still a new router or really intended 
as a router in general. It's a gaming router and at the same time it captures the business wireless router because it also has the guest portal, the guest network, kids network, IoT, BPN network, a lot of things regarding this one. But guys, let's try to check on the guest portal. This one is actually the same if you are, uh, have a business or a cafe that you want to have a guest portal, you can customize this one where every time your users or guests or customers connect your network, you can advertise your portal or any sites that you want to advertise on your wireless network, okay? Then aside from that one, maybe let's close this one. You have Kids Network. I believe the Kids Network, yes, it's for time scheduling. On when they will be able to access the internet, okay? And so on and so forth regarding this one. So aside from that one, let's go to the LAN. For the LAN, this is uh, LAN IP. The LAN IP is the IP address or the web management console IP address where we access a while ago and the DHCP server. For the DHCP server, guys, this is uh, related on what is the IP address pool that you want to give to your clients. And aside from that one, I believe we have your manually assigned IP. So if you have devices like printer or server, and you want them to have the same IP address every time they connect to the network, you just assign their MAC address here and the IP address that you want to assign to them. So it will be reserved to them. So every time they connect, they will have that exact same IP address. And you also have here additional route, IPTV, switch control, and VLAN. For the VLAN, wow, it's really like the same for the business series Wi-Fi router, expert Wi-Fi configuration okay i'll try to create a dedicated video for this one as well so it will be maybe available for all i'm not sure for high-end asus router and of course the expert wi-fi series and we have here one for the one this is uh dual one capable of two dual one okay and aside from that one you have port trigger for the internet connection yes basic information regarding this one you have uh, port forwarding, DMCD, DNS, net pass to, and next one would be USB application. Yes, for the USB application, there are actually two. As mentioned, there is a USB 3 and USB 2. Okay, then same thing, it has AID, server center, network printer. If you want to turn on or make your non network printer into a network printer, we also have here uh, tethering if you want uh, de your device, mobile device, to connect this router to be able to share the internet coming from your mobile device and time machine and of course download master next one would be ai cloud and amazon alexa usually i really don't use that one for the amazon alexa for that voice command we have your ipv6 i haven't actually used that one as well and for the firewall for the firewall guys yes we have here in general inbound firewall rules and of course we have here url filter we have a dedicated video for this one where you enter uh specific or a uh, code name for that specific website like for example uh, enter xxxx in the url filter so it will block all websites that have xxx on the devices that are currently connected like for example abc xxx it will be blocked or xxxx bbbb.com it will be blocked i have dedicated video for this one try to check that one out and you also have your keyword filter and network service filter Okay, also have a dedicated video for this and for the administration, guys. For the administration, yes, basic information, wow, media bridge, okay, wireless router mode, access point, repeater mode, media bridge, and AI mesh mode. We have your system under system, I believe this is the, yes, the username, password, and basic information or basic configuration for the router. We have here the firmware upgrade, guys. Usually for the firmware upgrade, it's actually better to, for your personal experience. Uh, personal preference i usually turn the auto upgrade because if it's working i don't have to worry anything but i i know that there is a update that really needs to be installed for security matters i installed that one try to check now and then for the firmware if there is an available firmware update and restore save settings yes this one is actually helpful if you uh, have a copy of the config file so when this one got broken, you can buy another one and just load the configuration that you have on this previous router. Okay, and feedback, policy, and system log, and network post. I believe that will be all for now because it will take a long time if we're going to discuss each and every feature on this Wi-Fi router.
there is a lot of features and details but of course we need to have an actual test guys just a reminder i don't have a mobile phone that is already capable of 6 gigahertz wi-fi network so we purchase a wireless card and install it in our laptop to be able to test the 6 gigahertz network but don't get me wrong there are already devices that have 6 gigahertz capability like the rog phone 6 and a lot of asus motherboards as well hopefully we can obtain one rog phone as well so we can use it in our future or regular digit wi-fi test but for now we will be using our p30 pro as our testing mobile device and of course use this one as well now let us proceed with the test Okay guys, for our initial test on the 6 GHz network, we will be using again the laptop for this is the only device capable of connecting to my 6 GHz network on the B98. Okay guys, for our initial test, we will be using again the laptop because this is the only device that I have that is capable enough to detect and connect to 6 GHz network coming from that B98. And let's just make sure that we are connected on the 6 GHz network. Yes, Asus B98 underscore 6 GHz. And on the speed test, let's hit go again. Okay guys, and there you have it. We have an initial speed test of 415 Mbps for download, 490 Mbps for upload. And of course, we're going to test it on the bedroom as well. Okay guys, and right now we are on the bedroom and of course still connected on the 6 GHz network. Okay, just make sure, yes, BE98 underscore 6 gigahertz. The door is closed and the router is on the other side of the room. And let's hit test on this location. And there you have it guys for the 6 gigahertz network on the speed test using the laptop. It's 323 Mbps for download while 302 Mbps for upload. Yes, of course there is a loss or slower internet connection here in the bedroom because there's a wall but I believe it should be stable even though there is a cut in speed but this is the result for the 6 GHz network Okay guys, for our baseline testing we are currently connected on the 5 GHz Wi-Fi network of this BE98 and of course, let's go on our speed test and guys, our Current connection or internet connection from Converge is 500 Mbps. So we are connected to PASIC test server and let's hit go for the speed test. Okay, for the baseline testing, we are getting 435 Mbps for download and 498 Mbps for upload. Guys, I would just like to remind you that we are not the only one using the internet connection. So basically, there will be uh, some plus 20 or negative 20% for our actual internet speed. So currently, that is the baseline testing. Let's try to move on the bedroom. Okay guys, and right now the door is currently closed and we're going to do a speed test on this location. Still connected on that 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. Okay, test again. Okay guys, currently we are getting 503 Mbps per download while 470 Mbps per upload and that is on a bedroom with the door closed. Okay, I'll just go downstairs to check our test. Okay guys, right now we are on the ground floor and let's try to double check. We are still connected on the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network with low signal compared to the other one okay so let's hit test on this location 503 and 470 coming from the master's bedroom okay and currently we are getting 80.8 mbps for download while 61.7 for upload here on the ground floor connected on the 5 gigahertz wi-fi network let's try to check if we connect to the 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi network Connect and okay. This is the Asus BE ninety eight, the two point four gigahertz Wi Fi network. And while I go for the five gigahertz eighty and sixty one, let's hit test again on this location. 
Okay, and currently we are getting 95.3 Mbps per download while 72.3 Mbps per upload here on the ground floor on the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network. And let's try to go on the roof deck. Okay guys, to be fair, I have brought the laptop on the roof deck to check and compare the capability of my mobile phone and of course the laptop. Okay, because different wireless devices like mobile phone or laptop have different Wi-Fi card in them. So let's try to check the performance of the two. So currently on the laptop, we are connected on the Asus BE98, which is the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network. While on the mobile phone, we are also connected on the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network. Let's try to do a speed test first on the laptop. So let's check and connect to Passive Converge and hit go. Okay, and we're getting 56.72 Mbps for download while 37 for upload. That is on the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network on the laptop. Okay, now on the mobile phone, let's go to speed test. Okay, and let's try to connect on the server so it will be the same. Okay, change server so passive should be the same. Okay, here's the one. And let's hit go. Okay, and we're getting somewhere around 64 Mbps for download while 59.7 for upload. It's not actually so, the difference is not so huge between the two. But of course, let's try to check on the 5 GHz Wi-Fi network. Okay, let's click on this one. Let's try to connect to the 5 GHz Wi-Fi network. Okay. Okay, currently we are now connected on the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network on the laptop. It's 56 and 37. Okay, it was an upgrade. It is now 64 Mbps for download while 38 for upload. Okay, let's try again on the mobile phone. Let's try to connect on the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. Okay, connected and let's go to the speed test and let's test again. Okay guys, as you can see, we have better internet speed on the 5 GHz Wi-Fi network on the mobile phone. It is now 85 and 42. Okay, unfortunately for the 6 GHz Wi-Fi network, this laptop is not able to detect or able to reach... Ooh, as you can see, yes, now, it's really hard to connect to this one because, yeah, let's try it. I'll try to show you on if it will be connected. One bar and, yes, because a while ago, I was not able to see this network. And currently, we were able to see it with one bar, but unfortunately, we are not able to connect to the 6 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. And of course, guys, my mobile phone doesn't have any 6 GHz Wi-Fi network capability, so we can connect to that one to test it on my mobile phone. And there you go for the speed test and range test of this Wi-Fi router. The range was great enough to have an internet access on three floors, while the router is on the second floor. But don't get me wrong, if you want better connection speed on all three floors, try to look for the AI mesh, and it is actually great. Now, how about gaming? Does it perform well? And we're going to find out using the 5 GHz Wi-Fi network because our mobile phone is only capable of 5 GHz Wi-Fi network. And let's proceed. Okay guys, now for the testing, we are currently connected on this 5 GHz Wi-Fi network and as you can see, we are getting single digit latency on this gaming experience. Okay, and as you can see, let's try to move on the other location. Maybe let's try to move on this location. Okay, I'll even try to close the door. And let's try to sit here. Okay. 
still single digit latency on 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network even though if you're looking at the signal it actually doesn't make sense because it's around two bars but still single digit latency guys on this location okay and let's try to move on another location as well just to make sure that we are getting a great signal on this router now we are on the ground floor and of course when i turn around it it guys single digit latency most of the time maybe sometimes around 10 ms for the latency but this is a great gaming experience on this location for the 5 gigahertz wi-fi network and i really love how it performs final thoughts this router is a beast and i give it a solid five star yes it is pricey but you're getting all the high-end features that you could want like 10 gig port for your nas and additional 10 gig port for your workstation or maybe a switch a guest portal and of course incredible gaming experience or performance even with great gaming you can also of course work from home without the hassle of disconnecting okay would i recommend it well it's tough to recommend if you're on a tight budget but if money isn't a concern and you want future-proof technology, especially with 6 gigahertz devices becoming more common, this is a fantastic choice. That said, Asus has more affordable options if you don't need all the bells and whistles of the GTBE98. Like, you can check out the RT series, the top series, or the Expert Wi-Fi series, okay? And that's it for today's review. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up. And if you have comments and suggestions, Drop them down on the comment section below or message me at JK Chavez on FB. Again, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Stay safe and bye.